Designed by Stuart O'Grady here, um, not only for uh, looking for TDU, but also to launch uh, SafeWise's latest road safety operation, which is Operation Safe Cycling. So Safe, safe Cycling obviously uh, is more relevant this time of year, not only because of the TDU, because of the increased uh, cyclists on our roads. Uh, generally speaking, between uh, January to March is the, uh, the most at-risk time for cyclists on South Australian roads, due to the great weather that we have here in the state and the abundance of great cycling that we have available to us as well. So Operation Safe Cycling will be running from the 13th to the 22nd of January, coinciding with the TDU. Um, it's a reminder that uh, last year, in 2022, three cyclists lost, lost their lives on South Australian roads. There were about 58 serious and life-changing injuries last year as well. And there's well over 400 other injuries to cyclists on our roads during the year. So it's not only a, an important time to um, just reflect on the fact that it is quite dangerous to be on the roads as a cyclist this time of year, but what we're saying is that it's not just the cyclist's responsibilities, it's everybody's responsibility to obey the road rules and to use the road safely. What we hope this year is that, and we're already seeing extra cyclists on the road at the moment, what we're hoping this year is that um, the cyclists um, actually obey the road rules as well. So they should know that you need to ride in the bicycle lane. Uh, you can ride two abreast, but where there is a bicycle lane, you need to remain within the bicycle lane. Um, cars, you need to remember, drivers of cars, you need to remember to give a metres distance between you and the cyclist when you're on the road, and that's when the speed limit is 60 kilometres an hour or under. If it's 60 kilometres an hour or over, then 1.5 metres is a safe passing distance when going past cyclists. So it's not just in the metropolitan area um, that we'll be seeing um, more cycling activities. There's certainly going to be a lot of cycling activities in the regions as well, on the foothills. Again, what I say to cyclists is be courteous to the road users on the road. Um, if you don't need to double up, go single file on the hills so that you can let cars and other vehicles get past you easily, rather than causing unnecessary frustration. So as part of Operation Safe Cycling, the Safe by Resources will be out in full swing to make sure that um, not only drivers on the road of vehicles and other motor vehicles, but also cyclists are doing the right thing as well. So we're hoping that we're going to have a, uh, another exciting TDU week, but we're also hoping that we're going to have a fatality free time in the city and in our regions uh, during this really exciting time as well. So again, the message is everybody, regardless of what mode of transport you use, please obey the road rules, be courteous to each other, and just recognise that there might be a few extra delays in and around the city, particularly with the great cycling and uh, great cycling weather that's coming up over the, over the next few weeks in particular. So with that, I perhaps um, I'd also just like to take the opportunity to um, just advise you that Sapol has released its most recent podcast, which is a documentary style uh, podcast, which is our Fatal Five True Stories. So this is the third in a series of the Fatal Five True Stories. Uh, this is about a guy called Byron Gordon, uh, who I used to cycle with. He was killed on New Year's Day two, days, uh, two years ago in 2021. Uh, a vehicle uh, being driven by a male who was uh, had a cocktail of drugs in his system, crossed onto the wrong side of the road at 7.30 a.m. on New Year's Day, crashed into Byron and killed him. Um, that person, uh, the driver of the vehicle, is now serving over five years imprisonment in jail after pleading guilty to offences. Uh, but Byron's family is serving a, you know, a lifetime sentence in terms of having lost a loved one. We're really appreciative of our community members actually um, providing support for road safety initiatives. And in this particular case, Byron's family and friends, uh, and also uh, people who stopped the accident scene and rendered assistance have contributed to this podcast which is a really powerful message reminding us of what the ripple effects are when someone's life is lost on the road. It's much more impactful than any of us really realise. And what we're hoping is that this particular podcast will remind people the reasons why you should stay safe on the road at all times, because the impact and the trauma is lifelong and it is widespread. So again, we want everybody to enjoy themselves, particularly over the next a uh, week and a bit with the TDU coming to town, but certainly through the summer months as well. So I might just hand over to Stuart before we come back and take any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart. Thank you, yes. Well, as the race director of the Santos Tour Down Under, our number one priority is safety, not just for, as for the racing cyclists, but also the public. Um, we've had fantastic support over the years with SAPOL. Um, it is a fantastic event. Most of the international teams have flown into Adelaide now and they will start uh, be busily out there doing reconnaissance of road stages. So 
all we ask as an organisation is just be a little bit patient. Um, there will be more bike riders out on the roads, um, but the bigger the welcome, uh, the nicer the wave instead of the beep to welcome them to Adelaide, the better. Um, and we just hope for a successful and very safe event. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just ask you, we saw a night and a nasty um, crash involving a bike and truck on the square yesterday morning. Do you have a, a condition on the cyclists update and on the truck use and even reported charge? Yeah, so about 7.30am yesterday morning, I think people are aware there's a crash between the cyclist and the truck just over the corner here at Victoria Square. Um, the male cyclist is a 44 year old male from Windsor Gardens, is still in the Royal Adelaide Hospital. I don't have any further update on his condition, but he was critical, uh, his injuries were critical at the time. Uh, and the truck driver is, is still assisting uh, police with our inquiries at this stage. And I guess it shows that it's not just out of the region of what is outside of the city. Yeah, um, overwhelmingly, uh, male cyclists are overrepresented in these crashes. So it's about 80% of, of uh, cyclists who are injured or, or killed in our roads are male cyclists. And 90% of those crashes occur within the metropolitan area. So, you know, high density, um, lots of roads. And despite the fact that there's good infrastructure and bicycle lanes that are available to cyclists at the time, um, it is still imperative for us to actually look out. So as um, motorists, we can often be caught up um, looking ahead uh, and checking the rear view mirror for uh, other vehicles. But what uh, is really important all times of year, but particularly this time of year, is just check your left mirror on the side of your car, particularly if you're turning left um, off a main road into another street, just to check to see if cyclists are coming. But cyclists also be aware, if vehicles are turning left ahead of you, you must wait for that vehicle to turn. Okay, so we're just trying to make it as safe as possible for everybody to avoid some of these really nasty crashes that we can see this, particularly this time of year. Do we ever see an increase during, yeah, during the tour down under in road incidents? Uh, so not necessarily during the TDU do we see an increase in crashes, but certainly in the warmer months, uh, it stands to reason that you know, it's great to get out in the day like today on the, on the bike and, and go for a ride just as it is with any other recreational pursuit. So what we see is more cyclists out the road, which then potentially creates um, more hazards and more risk, both for the cyclists but also for the motorists as well. And one thing I really want to reiterate is this is not about um, just about motorists. This is not just about car drivers or other vehicle drivers um, looking out for cyclists and taking responsibility. Cyclists have a responsibility to be safe on their roads as well. So wear highly visible clothing. Wear um, lights front and back day and night just to keep yourself as visible as possible and just to show a level of courtesy between yourself and other vehicles and other road users. Another incident overnight of some news breaking into cars and showing a fair amount of disrespect to officers, hopefully during the rest, but um, any comments on that? Uh, look, I don't have any further information in relation to that, but like you said, thankfully the other years have been arrested in relation to those offences. It's something that's not tolerated and I think the community are getting some control. Across the board, That's something for the uh, for the government to consider. Can I ask you about um, a, a, sadly a man's body has been found in flood waters up at Broxton North? What do you believe he was doing in the flood waters? Uh, look, that's still part of the investigation. But we um, sadly, a 78-year-old local man uh, from Loxton uh, was found uh, deceased in some floodplain waters adjacent to the River Murray uh, earlier this morning after being reported yesterday morning. Um, adjacent to where uh, he was found uh, was an upturned dinghy um, along with his vehicle parked uh, nearby as well. So, look, a really tragic set of circumstances. We don't know exactly what's happened at this particular point in time. Uh, so that'll form part of the investigation and also preparation of a report for the crime. Yes, I know you have made many messages to the public about Oh, 
Uh, there are so many hazards associated with the river, uh, particularly at this time, and we see that the, um, we're, we're talking about the high levels and the, and the flooding levels uh, across the river system at the moment. It is varying, but one thing is certain is that there is high flows, there is still debris in the water, uh, and there are still plenty of hazards. So um, the directions are in place to protect people, and that's what we ask people to abide by. Now, he was found far from the city. No, he wasn't found far from Thank you. Uh,